All right, everyone, this is a one shot, potentially more, for the Adventurer's Guide to Inns and Taverns. And today we are joining Korg, the Human Fighter, Timbo, the Wood Elf Ranger, Delos, the Human Wizard, Abilius, the Human Rogue, and Hamish, the dwarven cleric who is very particular about his name pronunciation and will remind you that the H is not silent. He's very hey. he's very proud of his dwarven name and, and will let you know. Together oh, Yeah. Together <laughs> they have been traveling, uh adventuring, selling their skills as um you know strong brave capable adventurers who can do anything you know that townsfolk might need in exchange for some coin and ale and they have arrived in the far town of of water ran kind of out on the border of the wildlands with humans having settled in the area and it being relatively safe as far as the town but further out there are still creatures and perhaps even monsters of myth and legend that still roam the uncharted and unexplored areas of this land as you guys enter the marketplace you can see all kinds of merchants trying to hawk their wares they have tents and uh, rugs set up with all kinds of goods spread out amongst the tables and and other setups. And they shout loudly like Penn Gillette from Penn and Teller just trying to get everybody to come over and check out what they have for sale. It's a noisy and busy place, and although there's not a token to represent every single person here, it is not so crowded that it's like Bourbon Street shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder packed, but it is crowded enough that, you know, occasionally someone will bump into you or, you know, you'll be trying to get closer to a tent and it will take, you know, a little bit of time. There seems to be a particularly long wait for whoever is in the big green tent directly in front of you. Hmm. Hmm. So Korg, Korg walks up to the front of the line and listens to what they're talking about in there. So as you kind of muscle your way forward, being one of the largest men in the crowd as usual for you um you get close enough to hear the raspy um almost uh lizard like language of a old female turtle who is selling maps to far off places Korg goes back to the group and says, Korg, listen, Korg says they're selling maps. Still looking for a grammar book uh, specifically about personal possessive pronoun. But that's what Korg heard. <clears throat> How much are the maps? Korg didn't ask. <laughs> Korg can't count. Korg goes back and listens to see if he can figure out how much do they cost. This time, as you're muscling your way up, there there's someone who's like, "Hey, buddy, watch where you're where you're shoving." <laughs> what do they look like? It's a somewhat older man, not like gray-haired, but you know, mature man. He looks like he might be a adventurer, perhaps a sailor. Yeah. Korg just says, oh, no foul intended. It is. He's 
make his way back and let's get in line. Not ready to start a fight yet. Okay, uh, Timbo's going to take a look at the guy a bit more closely just to see what kind of sailor, if he knows anything about him from his sailor background. Yeah, so as you take a look at him, um, you you see that he has several um, hand pistols, single shot uh, pistols strapped to a bandolier across his chest. A sure sign of someone who is either, you know, in a a black market type of situation. You know, I hesitate to use the word pirate, you know, just right off the bat to where you assume that he's like necessarily evil. Um, but, you know, you usually the people who find use for two or more uh, pistols is, is someone who has seen a, a good deal of danger and so if he's not involved in the black market, he's definitely doing some, you know, gray market type of stuff. Or he is um, like a, a free runner, uh, which is basically a sailor who is not part of any official governmental fleet or, you know, sanctioned fleet. They're not necessarily pirates. But uh, because they don't have the backing of the governments and all of that, they don't have armed soldiers. And so the sailors themselves have to protect the ships. Maybe she's going to wander over to the peasant to the right, the tent, just kind of see what's going on. Yeah, so you see an old man and he's holding up various jewels he has a large uh bluish white jewel in his hand at at the moment and spread out in various containers on his uh rug are several other uh jewels mostly like um large pieces of quartz um geodes you know things like that Dallas is going to accompany him. Yeah, so um, uh, Delos, as you are uh, kind of examining what's going on there, um, you you can uh, use your arcana knowledge to see if any of these gems would, uh, you know, perhaps be magical or useful as a magical regent. Perfect. I was just going to ask that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll make an arcana roll. How do I do that? <laughs> oh, uh, so you go. To, I'm sorry. You go to your sheet, and uh, you you uh, open up the skills and scroll down to Arcana and click on the D20 next to it. Oh, cool. Nice. <clears throat> Can Abelius uh, check out that guy that bumped into Cork? See if he took anything. What do you mean? Yeah, but like you're gonna pat him down or or what? I don't know. See if he's you know if I can see that he uh, maybe palms something or is looking shifty. Well, I mean you're you're probably pretty capable at sleight of hand yourself, so I guess I'll allow you to roll perception to see if you noticed any sleight of hand. Um, so Delos. As you're examining all of these, you do notice that amongst all of his uh, all of his uh, gems, he does have a prism, which can be used for um, various uh, 
dazzling lights and uh, other spells as a as a magical focus, you know, like uh, prismatic ray and stuff like that. Spray, prismatic spray. Okay, I want to ask him uh, how much for this uh, babble. Well, I I want to get fifty gold for it. <laughs> fifty gold. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, five silver. Five silver. I mean, I'm taking all the risk here. I've had I've had this gem sitting here for how long and. You know, I, I I can't just lose money on it. All right. Um, can I offer you three gold? Thirty. <laughs> Which of us has the best persuasion? Is. Yeah, the group is anyone good at persuasion? Because it's not me. I'm gonna do it. Charisma. Who's got charisma? Or is there another skill for negotiating? No, persuasion is is uh, the one you want to go with. Um, please uh, go down to your uh, chat on the right, and you'll see at the very bottom there's. Um, a a uh as and click on your your character name um that way when it pops up instead of saying eric k it'll say abilius so that i can see who rolled Sorry, which section is that Perfect. on? Perfect, yep. Where it has your name as, it probably says as Bob O, do the drop down and choose Korg. Yep. Oh. Change Barry F to Finch. Looks like Abilius is pretty good, though, with persuasion. Yeah. So as uh, Abilius moves from uh, spying on the... Uh, sailor and not seeing any any uh you know sleight of hand happen it seemed to just be truly you know a uh uh simple you know bump into him um but as as you uh <clears throat> are going over and starting to negotiate with this other merchant you know, he says 30 and you come back at him and you say, for this, this is a, a simple prism that, that I can pick up from any port city for, you know, 15 silver pieces. Uh, we'll give you five gold and not a, not a single, you know, silver more. Uh, and uh, the merchant kind of scratches his, his head and he says, 15. And sticks out his hand. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll, I'll pay, pay, I'll pay 15. Fifteen it is. I'll hand him the, the fifteen gold. Okay. Uh, give me just one second, guys. Uh, my sister is here dropping off some food. I have to go answer the door, and I'll be right back in like 30 seconds. We don't have to practice social distancing out here. <laughs> I'm going to take a whiz. Maybe being a bit downwind would be better, or upwind. Oh, it's just a whiz. I was going to say, what did we decide on gold, by the way? Are, are we just coming in with uh, what was in the player handbook? Or are we... Max. Yeah, we, we, we were taking max whatever it said. Like, if you had, like, yeah. you know, like three, three die four, three die six, whatever, you took that in gold. And whatever your discipline or whatever anything else says, you get more. Like, you know, my as an acolyte, I had 15 extra gold pieces on top of whatever, you know, the, the cleric would have, so to speak. We're loaded. 
Yeah. Do we need a 10 foot <laughs> hole? Do we have a 10 I've hole? never needed one in my life, but Please we're going to need one for this campaign. Ugh. And I'm going to have to carry it. Fuck. We, we don't need one. You, you know why the 10 foot pole is like such a common thing? Because people fall into pits and then they have a 10 foot pole. Uh, it's it's that, and it is also um, that uh, there used to be um, a lot more Gygaxian type of dungeons, and as you know, Gygax loves his traps, and so the 10-foot pole was that you could tap on every step you took and, you know, touch every door and everything else, like you used a 10-foot pole to try and activate all the traps. <laughs> yeah, I hate ten foot poles. I should put that in Cord's uh, bio. Hates ten foot poles. All right, so uh, we can continue on. But one more funny thing about ten foot poles is um, a a ten foot pole sold for like one gold piece or or some equivalent of that. But a ladder sold for like copper pieces, you know, like a couple a couple silver pieces. It was like really cheap to buy a ladder. And so somebody was like, buy ladders, remove the uh, connecting pieces. You got two 10 foot poles, sell them. <laughs> <laughs> you make mad profit. Yeah, no need to adventure. Just get a rug, start selling 10 foot poles. Yep. You too can be a peasant. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, you guys pay him the 15 gold pieces for the prism, and now you have a magical focus that instead of being consumed, like some of your other, you know, um, magical material components that are required for spells, this one uh, just allows you to focus the magic through it over and over again so it's reusable like that. And it's good for any of the uh, illusion-based uh, spells like pr prismatic spray and uh, dancing lights and uh, minor illusion stuff like that. Mm. So how's the line over here with the turtle going? Is it moving along? Or? Yeah, yeah. So you guys finally make your way up to like the five customers that she waits on at a time. And so now you're allowed inside the tent to look at the spread of maps that she has all over the tables. Ah. What? I'll ask the old... Uh, it's turtle. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to say what... What do these maps say? Oh, big fella, easy there. You're gonna you're gonna knock over my tables. Watch where you're walking. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's not my fault. I'm as well fed as you're glad. Oh, I can see that. Looks like you're not starving today either. <laughs> no. Anyway, big fella, what was your question? Easy there. Don't back into that table. <laughs> what do these maps show? What do you show they? Oh, they show all the lands of the of the known world. Each map can show you a different, you know, level of of either a overview of a continent or like z zoomed in focuses on cities, and some of them are. You know, maps that will lead you to ancient cities lost in the in the jungles and darkness all over this world. Some of them are maps to faraway continents with people far different from our own. Uh, some of them are even said to be maps of different planes of existence, if you believe that. Hmm. Cord not concerned with other planes of existence. Do you have any maps of this region, of the Wilders, or any other I, any in, treasure in, maps? Indeed, that whole table right there is maps of the local area. 
all accurate and and drawn within the last five years. All right, so I think that we should get some of these maps. How much does such a map cost? Can you even read one? Of course. I just have problems with possessive pronouns. <laughs> oh, so so it's just a syntax problem. You're not funny in the head. No, nay. I've uh, hit a couple of times. That's about it. Uh, judging from those scars, it looks like they hit you pretty good. Aye. Well, those maps right there are five silver apiece. So, DM, are we new to the area as characters, or do we kind of have a familiarity with what we're seeing? Is, is it a good assumption that we're just kind of new in the area? We just kind of showed up in the port or wherever we're Yeah, at? yeah, you guys, you guys are kind of on like a... Uh, continent-wide pub crawl so to speak you know you're you're coming for the ale but uh staying for the for the paid adventuring to pay for the ale so if i'm if i'm a cleric with an 18 wisdom and i'm looking at the maps trying to get a from a wisdom standpoint trying to understand do those look like they're accurately drawn for what i remember coming in the town and what it might be could it make sense to me? Would that be an inside role or would that be a perception role or what would that be for me? Or what would I do for that? I, I think that for that, it would be knowledge. Uh, is there a geography or just nature? History. History. History could work. Being a dwarf, you guys actually have like pretty extensive uh, records of like you know, the world and, and you yep. take, you take schooling pretty seriously, even clerics, uh, fighters, you know, uh, you're, you're schooled in, um, everything because for the dwarves, like it is, it is a, all about propaganda in a, in a way to where like they need to tell you the grand history of the dwarves and how the elves messed it up and how the orcs and goblins are like, you know, evil monsters that need to be killed. And so part, yes, right. So part of the propaganda is teaching you, you know, history very, you know, thoroughly and all of that. And so you would be somewhat familiar with the overall layout of the continent to begin with. And so if you take a look at these uh, maps, you can use history or uh, knowledge, nature, or geography. I'm pretty well versed in history, my dwarf companion. Let's both take a look here, my friend, and see what we, which map we want to lean into and get. Can I assist the dwarf? Who who Give is that? An assist. This is Delos. Wizard. Can I assist Delos? The dwarf? Yes, yes. So, because you are a wizard, you probably would have studied somewhere in the far east uh, lands of the five kingdoms, um, possibly with the dragonborn. That's that's kind of your call to make. Where exactly you would have done your studying and all of that. But so you would have been uh, taught some of the ancient geography as well, you know, as part of that. So, yeah, you can roll history as well. Now, what do we do? Just so, click on the back. So basically, Delos is assisting you. He needs to make a difficulty class 10 history check, and then you get advantage on your roll if he can make that. Okay, here it goes. Perfect. So you did not make it, but you did not fail with a with a nat one. So he doesn't get disadvantage. He just doesn't get advantage. So now Hamish, you go to your skills and you click on history, the D20 right next to it. You just click on that. That means they rolled a three because I have a plus six to my history. <laughs> Stupid question. Getting to skills, I get. I do that how? Uh, you open your character sheet under journal, like you did when we were setting everything up, and then you'll see core stats, uh, class skills, 
you click on the skills and then scroll down until you see history. So I see the dice out to the to the left of history. I click on that. Yep. Roll type normal. Roll type normal. Yep. All right. So looking down at this, uh, you can't determine the degree to which it is accurate, but you can tell that it is at least passably accurate. Okay. Okay. Well, dudes, I say we uh, we spend out on this one. Yeah, I think we should get one for the town and the continent and anything else you guys want. Okay, okay so Korg says, Korg will use Korg silver for such a map. All right, so the map of this local area is five silver apiece. The map of the continent is five gold pieces. I think we need that. Cork's got money. Cork. I'll buy the continent. I'll buy the continent. Well, the map of the continent. Yeah, well, yeah. No, the continent. <laughs> I'll buy the map of the continent. I, I, I do like the thought that Korg would believe that by buying this, he is actually buying what is represented. <laughs> <laughs> so... So how many silver do I go? Five, you said? Yeah, it's five silver for the local map, and then it is a further 50 silver or five gold pieces for the uh, continental map. I'll buy that too. You can you can try. You can roll for persuasion if you want to do you know interactive role playing. We can we can do that, yeah. or you can or you can just roll. I'm gonna go for a straight roll, even though my persuasion sucks. Just because I want to no, roll. I'll assist, I'll assist Korg. We got this. Yeah, so again with the ass assistance, you roll Persuasion, difficulty class 10. If you make that, he gets advantage. So I roll to see if I can assist. Yeah, would it help you if we say Hamish says, Korg says, Timbo says? Do you know what voice is speaking? Uh, for for right now, yes. Uh, if we end up doing a, a ongoing campaign, I will learn your voices. It just, you know, right at first, it's a little hard to, to tell. Um, so you are able to give Korg advantage so now korg when you open your character sheet and click on the persuasion it'll say normal role advantage disadvantage click Got on it. advantage korg is there ready submit is that what i roll yep all, all right, right. Sure. so good thing you had advantage because your other role was a straight zero uh so uh well, that's a 20 yeah so uh uh, you, he rolled a zero? No, he rolled a two. Uh, oh. So, <laughs> so uh, as as you are negotiating, uh, Korg is is not very charismatic at all. But with Abilius kind of giving him, um, you know, a little a little bit of a of a helper, he he points and. Um, you don't have prestidigitation, do you? No. Oh. Uh, I have sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Roll sleight of hand. Oh yeah, you're Abilius, not Delos. Uh, so uh, roll roll sleight of hand, and see if you can quick smudge it. <laughs> All right. So now I'm gonna roll perception for the turtle. But she's going to be at disadvantage because Korg is still trying to argue the best price. And so she fails to notice you smudge it. And as you bump Korg and point to the smudge, Korg instantly becomes like uh, uh, a total Karen. You know, like, I need to speak to your manager. There's a smudge on this one. I, I can't even tell if... You know, it's it's going to lead me straight off the edge of the world and and plummet into the void, you know. And so, um, Korg is is uh, 
you know, getting more and more upset and finally to calm him and get him moving along and get to the next customers, she agrees to sell it to you at half price. So 25 silver. All right, I'm taking that off of my silver. And then she kind of is like, now chew, be gone with you. Get out of here, you brute. <laughs> oh, them's fighting words, Korg. These maps, yeah. these maps might be edible, but they're not very tasty. So go find you a, a good inn and and fill that belly of yours. Korg <laughs> says, Korg likes maps. Uh. All right. So as you guys are exiting the uh, map tent and heading back out into the crowd, a young boy with a shield strapped to his back and a sword that is almost as tall as him strapped to uh, his other shoulder, he comes walking up to you and says, Boy, you're the biggest man I've ever seen. Korg says, That's what she said just last (laughs) week. No, I'm a boy. <laughs> That's what Korg said anyway. <laughs> Korg found that out the hard way too. Right? <laughs> uh, anyway, I, if if you could help me, I, I'd gladly pay for someone as strong as you are to help me with this. What do you need, boy? Uh, maybe. Maybe we should talk over a bowl of stew and 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 get some food in our bellies, and I'll I'll pay for your meal and tell you what I have, and you can tell me if you're in. McCorg says, "What say you, lads?" Ale involved. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pay know? I'll pay for the meal which comes with ale. Yes. Let's go. Uh, 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 can I just talk to this other patron over here, and uh, I'll, I'll meet you guys there. Are you asking them permission? <laughs> you send them no, name. I'm saying it as I'm walking away. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I just wanted to know if you were, like, sticking around, like, please, can I go off on my own? Or, you know, like, if you were like, I'm going to go over here. You guys have fun. What's the name of this tavern, boy? It's the Drunken Goat. Okay, so we tell Dallas, meet us at the Drunken Goat. We'll order for you. Wouldn't miss it. Be right there. All right. So he kind of leads you guys down this alley here. And even though it looks like just a simple room with a couple tables set up, pretty soon a young woman comes from across the, the way carrying a tray full of of bowls and mugs. Uh, Whoa, how'd you, you fit through the door, big man? I had to stoop. I bet. <laughs> Timbo's a bit cautious here. He's uh, going to stick outside the door and just look around a bit. Is that okay? Yeah, so you see the barmaid kind of walk past you, and she's like, oh, oh, watch it. Don't, Don't tip my tray. All right, so we'll we'll get to you guys in just a second. She sets down the the bowls and the ale, and uh, the young man pays her, and and she leaves. And so we'll we'll pick up you know from there once we get back to you. Delos, you walk up to this woman who seems to be from the far east where where you studied, and she is dancing uh, in the streets as some of the uh, more lecherous members of the crowd are tossing copper, silver, and even a few gold pieces at her feet. Does it look like she's stopping anytime soon so I can speak with her? She appears to to be dancing to a song played on a um, very Chinese guitar type of type of instrument, and uh, I actually don't know the name of the instrument, but uh, Chinese guitar, 
I, I don't know. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all um, Hero. You know, where you guys ever watch the Jet Li movie Hero where, where they're playing in the courtyard when he's playing uh, chess? For sure, yep. Yeah. So, you know, uh, he's playing like that, but it's a more it's a more upbeat, happy, you know, Kung Fu Panda style song. And she's just dancing and twirling. And you actually happen to recognize this song. It's uh, kind of like their version of uh, like a one hit wonder, you know, like uh, the Macarena or something, you know. So you you actually happen to recognize the song and you know that it's quite long but coming to the end so she's been dancing for like almost 10 minutes and she's exhausted as the song comes to an end and she goes to sit down on one of the barrels near where he is playing was i will he he stops i will i will swiftly come over with some water from one of my flasks and and say i recognize the song and tell her what it is yeah, so um, she seems a bit suspicious of you at first, uh, but she she kind of sniffs the water and uh, hands it to the old man who takes a drink. And when he, you know, gives her a nod, she drinks it and says, thank you. Yes, that is a uh, song that I brush my teeth to every morning. I said, well, fair maiden, my friends and I are here in town, and we're looking for good uh, taverns. Uh, whereabouts are you staying? Where, where is the good tavern that you would recommend? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't uh, tell strangers where I'm staying. But if you want to go to a good tavern, it's on the other side of town. It's the White Dove, and it is the best in tavern in town. Ah, duly noted. What uh, what makes it so so wonderful? It is run by Sisters of Mercy who tend to uh everybody who comes in. They they get good food, medical care, you know, it's it's basically um like visiting a a hospital that's also a five-star inn. That's not what she says. I'm explaining it to you. Got it. Mm-hmm. Creeping on the girl and get back there. Yeah, totally. So <laughs> that's one of my problems with my character is he's he's definitely got issues with alcohol and women. Yeah, well, she is a very attractive woman, um, even you know by by normal standards of like it's the dark ages so like any woman is you know a lot better looking than the smelly sweaty men you encounter most of the time and way better looking than the orcs and goblins and minotaurs and other you know monsters that you you know encounter in the world so you know um you know any woman is is better than nothing but this particular woman is is like a supermodel in the dark ages well i've wasted enough of my friend's time so i tell her uh, i must be going but uh i enjoyed the dance and even more so the conversation and i tip her silver and then i retrieve my flask and head to the inn where everyone else is she, and i and i say by the way delos is the name she she smiles <laughs> at you and uh the old man stands up and kind of uh, shoes you along. (laughs) All right, so before you make it back, uh, the barmaid, of course, like I said, leaves and and goes to go get more uh, food and ale and all of that. Um, Timbo is possibly still standing outside, but you guys have a moment to talk while Delos is, uh, you know, ogling the dancer so um the young man says well i suppose i should start by introducing myself my name's callan callan the third third of my name my father was uh, a great man 
and he was cut down in his prime and he left me not but this shield and his sword and I I don't fit into the armor properly enough to wear it but one day I'll wear his armor and a map and that map leads to a treasure that my father was was trying to to rescue but he died in the attempt and now to honor my father and also because I like money I I want to go and retrieve his treasure but if my father was cut down and I'm certainly not strong enough to carry the treasure to begin with I'm going to need some help both with retrieving it and bringing it safely back if you guys help me I'll give each of you one uh, tenth share. So because there's five of you, you'll get 50% of the treasure. Doing that math in my head, it doesn't seem to add up. Yeah, five tenths. Yeah. More wisdom than intelligence, so there you go. So it's, it's boy, what fate befell your father? Who failed him? I don't know. All I know is that he never came back, so he must be uh, dead. Show us this map. Well, I'm not going to show you until you all agree. So why would you trust complete strangers you meet in the in the market? Because I don't trust anyone in this town. I'm in. As soon as I get a couple of tankards in me, I'm restless. You probably shouldn't bar- eat the tankards. Oh, damn. All right. Is the barmaid back? Uh, not yet. Yeah, uh, before she comes back, you guys uh, talk a little bit more. Um, whoever, you know, is hungry eats some of the stew. And then as as Delos arrives, she'll be coming back, you know, to see what he wants. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what he wants. She's going to bring him a bowl of stew and a mug of ale. And Callan happily... Uh, uh, pays for that as well. I'm okay. just curious, uh, how is he paying for it? Like, does his wallet seem, or his purse seem pretty heavy with coin, or what's going on? Well, his his purse is, um, you know, hefty as far as like he's he's not broke, but uh, he's he's paying with an odd coin. It's not a silver coin like uh what you guys are used to nor is it a gold coin it, it's some kind of uh darkened uh clay like substance with a special marking on it the human kid about how old and not not talking with an accent uh, pro- probably like 15, 14, you know, right around that age. I mean, I'll ask him, can I see one of those coins? That is an unusual coin. At that, he seems to get a little, uh, you know, like, what? <laughs> hey, here, hold this gold piece. I'm I'm fascinated by the by the coin that you have. Uh, I just have regular coins, and he reaches into his purse and pulls out a silver coin and shows you. Um, could I do a perception check to see if there's anything bizarre about him? Whether he's actually human, whether he's actually like showing what he's supposed to be showing in the sense of like he is actually what he looks like. Yeah, you can you can uh, you know roll. All right, so 
He looks like a shaggy-headed youth who has been brought up. Um, his family was probably once like proud knights or something like that, but it seems as though they've kind of lost uh, title or land or something, and so he's been brought up kind of to be an adventurer of, of sorts. And um, yeah, that that's that's what you get from looking at him. Like he's well muscled, but still young, you know. <laughs> well, what do you say, gang? Are we in for an adventure? Why don't we somebody try and negotiate him a little bit on that, and then we go from there. <clears throat> so did the barmaid come back yet? Yeah, she brought uh, Delos his his ale and uh, uh, stew, and so while she's there, if anybody wants anything more, you just got to... You know, flag her down. Uh, I just I flag her down. Yeah. I said, Maid, I've seen things your people wouldn't believe. Attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. I watched sea beams glitter in the dark near the townhouse gate. Name's Korg. See you around. <laughs> like it. She, uh, just kind of smiles at you knowing that, you know, she's got to be polite to everybody. And, uh, yeah, that's just Korg's standard pickup line. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she, she, she looks at you, but, uh, doesn't, you know, reciprocate anything. Yeah. I'm going to get her attention and I'm going to count. I'm going to, point at everyone and just go one, two, three, four, and then point at myself five, and then tell her, we're going to need five more ales. Five, five more well. eels? Ales. <laughs> we, 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 we don't serve eel pie here. You'll have to go to Liverport for that. Eel the tankards. Your tankards. Five more. Oh, Okay. And so she she goes and uh, grabs five tankards of ale and brings them in. And this time, when you see Callan pay for them, you see him slide her uh, one silver coin. And then whatever else you gentlemen want. I just wanted five beers. <laughs> oh, you wanted five beers. <laughs> Okay. That's right. That's Dallas's standard line. Nice. Uh she she sets them down in front of each of you though, so like you can you can grab them up or whatever. She's she's not getting into totally. in that. She she goes back into her little area. <laughs> okay. She's not okay, a part so... of your shenanigans. Somebody try to negotiate him down on the price so that we go from there. I gladly accept your offer to take less money. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many other takers, lad. Well, I mean, you did say negotiate him down on the price, so. <laughs> I tell him We'll take 65% of the lot. Uh, 50%. Uh, that's what you said before. We want 65%. Can you even do the math on that? Oh, yeah. The wizard can. <laughs> when he's sober. Because this guy's like, you know... Not a noble per se, but he at least was taught to read and write. But like a lot of people today can't. I finished both my drinks already, by the way. Well, he says we... that the offer is for 50%. I can go hire some brutes to help me, but you guys look like, you know, brave adventurers who would, uh, jump at the chance to collect half a treasure chest full of gold. About 50%. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm okay with this deal. He's been pretty generous so far. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Now remember, not only do you have to help me get it, you have to help me get it back safely. Mm. How far, how, how many days adventure is it away? Uh, it's only a day away in the swamps, but who knows what we're going to face. So no horse travel, pony travel through the swamp, or we're on foot? No, we'll have to travel on foot. Okay. Leave at daybreak? That sounds fine to me. Shall we meet? Uh, Here. Just to be fair, I thought I should mention that Timbo, like I did write it in last night that uh, freight, like natural uh, element is or the like, terrain yeah. is the. Storm. Yeah, I, I saw that. And then you saw in the undead, I think I put, or did I not? I can't remember. Yeah, no, I, I, I needed to set everything up, so I was double checking all of your stuff, so I saw the uh, favored terrain swamp and favored enemy undead. Perfect. Okay, so. We don't know where to stay, but Delos knows where to stay. What about that white dove? That sounded nice. The white... I tell the my group about the white dove, but more importantly about the uh, the beautiful maiden in great detail. Callan says the white dove? Oh, you're looking to spend your profits already? Where do you suggest, or do you have a place for us to stay tonight? I stay at the guild hall, but uh, you guys can probably crash in the in the inn that is attached for one gold piece each. Is there a place to resupply either this either this afternoon or tomorrow morning before we go? Oh, absolutely. The guild has everything you need. Everybody ready to go? Yep. Yep. Let's go. And would we be able to like talk through like supplies? I mean, we, I mean, I have the you know whatever that dungeon pack is or that uh, what's it called explorers pack already. I'm not sure right. anybody else. Has. I don't have that keyed in yet because I didn't figure out how to do that. But I got it. Well, yeah, paper. yeah, we know what's in there, and if if you need to use any of those things, we'll we'll deal with that. But uh, you know, for now, like, what kind of resupplying and everything were you looking for? I guess, I mean, I don't know if I need anything, because I kind of have it all on the sheet here. What what did you need, uh, Abelius? Oh, this is going to be a bedroll. Are we hit, we're heading out in the morning, right? Did you already have, did you come with an explorer's pack? Most of everybody's characters started with something like that, either a dungeon pack or an explorer's pack, typically. Oh, my pack is a little different, specialized than that. Explorer's pack, bedroll, mess kit, tinderbox, ten torches, rations, water skin, 50 foot rope, and six 10 foot pole. <laughs> For when the first five get burned up by fire traps. Exactly. <laughs> We're ready to go to the guild hall. Let us know if we can, like, you know, like, get through the get get through the night. We're all going to go to bed and get up in the morning and yep. get this guy ready to yep. go, or we need to do something. Nope, nope. It, it, it's going to kind of be a, a flash forward through the night. You know, we're, we're waking up the next morning, resupplying, getting ready to go, possibly eating yep. breakfast, if anybody wants yep. to eat breakfast. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Yep. Can I also use my uh, whetstone to sharpen some of my bolts? Yeah, absolutely. Although the uh, the bolts uh, typically don't have like the broadheads as as much, but uh, you know if if you're picturing your bolts as having broadheads, yeah, you can you can definitely sharpen them. Maybe just the daggers then. I don't know. And this is going to be an ignorant question because I haven't played in 20 years, but should I be picking up some more arrows just in case? Just to save. 
typically speaking, 20 arrows is, is going to get you, you know, pretty far. But, I mean, from a realistic perspective, you would probably, you know, have an extra bundle of arrows ready to go for if you run out of the first one and you'd pick up another one anytime you were down to that last bundle, you know? Yeah, I think I can, I can afford the weight, so maybe I'll just go ahead and pick up one, one more bundle. Is it a bundle of 20 then? Yeah. Okay, I'll add it into my inventory. So take us to the guild hall, boy. Oh, how much is that? I should reduce, I'm sorry to over uh, interrupt, but how much should I take out of my gold? I'm pretty sure it's one gold piece per 20 arrows, but let me just look it up. Yep, that's right. I'm looking oh, at it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Like I said, I I have a pretty strong grasp of everything, but you know it, it's hard to say with 100% certainty that you know everything, you know. And if you want a quiver to hold them, it's a gold too. Yep. Although you don't need a quiver because you already have one, you know, so you can just leave them wrapped in your in your pack and then pull them out when you need them. Okay, that sounds good. All right. So uh, he takes you to the guild hall. You guys pay one gold piece each. I don't care how you want to split split that up. Fair. If everybody wants to just subtract one gold or if one person wants to pay and collect from everybody later. Everybody can, everybody's got money. We'll just take it off one, off one of ours. All right. Yeah. So you guys pay one gold, and that comes with a... Uh, continental breakfast spread in the morning. It, it's it's not uh, anything you know overly special, but there is some uh, fried uh, pig belly, otherwise known as bacon, and uh, a few eggs that have been um, you know cooked into a a scrambled egg type of type of dish, as well as bread, cheese, and ale. Off and go. I eat as much of that as I can. <laughs> so they cut you off after you go up for thirds. <laughs> you gobble down the first two plates of pig fat and belly like they were divine treats. And when you go up for, for thirds, they give you a half a portion and, and tell you no more. <laughs> Just like real life. <laughs> All right. So, anybody need any uh, resupplying before we head out? I just need to fill my flasks, uh, one with water and three with wine. <laughs> there is no wine set out. <sighs> any alcohol? Ale. Deal. I'll I'll take it. What is that going to run me? Oh, it's it's all free. That this is part of the one gold that you paid. Okay, great. Typically, a meal like this would be like one silver piece, but it comes with the room and everything. So, Callan, there. Yeah. So Callan uh, eventually meets up with you guys after uh, breakfast. He seems to have already eaten in his, uh, you know, guild membership area where you guys aren't allowed. And uh, he he comes up and takes you down to the uh, armory, smith, uh, and general supply uh, area. Standing next to Abelius later, I'm going to just whisper to him that we probably ought to be looking behind us as we travel into the swamp to see if this isn't a setup and someone is following us or tracking us throughout this whole adventure to take it from us after we get it. I mean, I would. That's good, yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any stealthy skills? A little bit. Uh, Timbo's got a proficiency in that. 
So the ranger and the rogue are somewhat stealthy, but they're going to be hindered by the heavily armored <coughs> Korg and Hamish. Well, I was just thinking if somebody wanted to hide and stay back as we are traveling and see if we have any stragglers behind us, that's always a possibility. Mm-hmm. Ah, pull, pull the old Lucius Verinus. Who are you looking for? I'll know him when I see him. <laughs> I guess I could sort of uh, pull off through the woods, right? And just sort of follow at a distance. Sort of staying stealthy and sort of <clears throat> just seeing what's behind us. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's probably exactly. better off the point there. All right. What next? Well, next is the travel. So, um, who was scouting? Is that Timbo? Yes, that's Timbo. All right. So, Timbo, go ahead and roll for perception to see if you can see or hear, possibly smell. I don't know how elves work. Um, What's going on? So, trying (laughs) trying to keep track of everything... Uh, oh, you rolled persuasion. Uh, yeah, no, roll perception. It's it's actually right on your token. You just click on token, and then you'll see perception is like the second one over. Up at the top. I couldn't find it. Oh, I see where it was. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Anyway, I pushed with it. As long as perception got rolled. So, uh, you're looking, and you do, in fact, see a group of men all wearing dark cloaks that appear to be following the tracks. They're not following so close that they can see them, but they appear to be following the tracks. How many men? Uh, Good idea. You 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 count three, but these could just possibly be the scouts. I don't know if we've agreed how close I am, but I don't know. Is there some way I could like fire an arrow near somebody that's furthest back in the pack to sort of signal that you know something to pay attention? Like oh I'm oh no, you're 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 too you're too far for that. Yeah. You're like okay. you're like a mile behind. Cuz you got to remember you need to move stealthily so you can't move at full speed. Well, I mean you could, but okay, then you'd well... be taking penalties to your stealth, so, you know. Okay, I guess for so... now I'll just watch the three and uh, see what they're doing. They appear to be following the tracks. So I'll keep going along and obviously sort of following the tracks, but just parallel and so I can sort of see where the, the group is headed and at the same time keep an eye on just where those, the, those followers are. We don't know this is happening, right? No. No, he has no way of communicating it to you. We should have bought those walkie-talkies back at the guild hall. Hmm. All right, so you guys are going to arrive at the uh, location, and the men who are following appear to have set up a camp about a mile outside of, of where uh, Kalen would have shown you guys where you were going. Is Kalen with us? Yep. But we can't communicate with Timbo. I assume we're going to wait here for Timbo. Yeah, I think what I would do, or what I am Timbo is doing, is that uh, he's watching them set up camp, and then he's going to head back to the group to sort of let them know, and assuming that the fact that they're set up camp, that you know they'll be there at least probably for the night. Yeah, so... Uh... 
they set up camp, you march forward, and eventually you guys all meet up. And so uh, you find Kalen, Hamish, Korg, Abilius, and Delos kind of uh, standing around in the knee-deep muck. Uh, for Hamish, it's a little bit deeper than knee-deep. And... Uh, mm. And uh, they're they're kind of miserable, you know. I mean, you made good time with that last mile since you didn't need to worry too much about being stealthy. But still, they've been standing around waiting for you, so nobody's overly happy. Amish uh, can feel the swamp soaking into his beard, so he he doesn't love that. And, and uh, Korg, having you know done a lot of marching already today knows that he's getting swamp water in his blisters, so, you know, that can't be good. What time of day is it? Uh, probably noonish. How much further, Kaylin? Uh, it's right up ahead here. The cave is right there. Can you see it? Aye. Yes, with your eyes. <laughs> Would it be uh, inappropriate to, to, to ask um, Abelius if he saw anything interesting? I would be uh, our elf friend here. Yeah, I think I'd be the one who would want to look for tracks. Oh, sorry, marks, sorry, Timbo. Markings out front. I met him. Abelius might be slightly offended by that being confused for an elf, considering that they're considered <laughs> quite waif like and effeminate by most other races. Sure, I'll start remembering who's who next time. <laughs> We've been traveling companions for how long now? Oh, an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> should, should I roll perception then to see what I can see outside from the cave? Like, like uh, footprints, marks, like, things like that? Well, this is like knee-deep swamp water, so footprints? Not so much. Um, you know... But you can roll perception to see what you you can hear and and see and all of that. Go for it. I I did actually when I did that little button up. What did you say? It didn't roll. Who who is this? Who's trying to roll? It's Timbo trying to roll perception. Seems to be working. Roll perception. Does that give me uh, any help? Because he did. Uh determine anything about this? Mostly about like, you know. I can give you my regular my regular perception though, right? Oh, of course. Anybody can look at stuff. I'm gonna. All right, so, yeah, as you guys are kind of looking at the rocky formation that forms the cave, it appears to be a natural limestone cave. However, Timbo, you being a wood elf who is very used to um, the wilds and woods and, you know, all of that, can sense that there is a predator nearby in addition to the uh to to the uh sound uh, of frogs and insects you guys can also hear a low growl type of sound i am not um seth mcfarlane nor uh, that guy from Police Academy, so I cannot do all of the noises and voices myself, but it sounds a little like this. That was just Hamish going to the bathroom. <laughs> Hamish, we told you to go easy. So how's Kalen behaving with, in all of this? 
Uh, he's he's been good, you know. You haven't had to like really reprimand him or anything, you know. Your your babysitting duties are going well. But did you tell us about those guys trailing us? Nah, he kept that to himself. He figured you guys would like the surprise. Okay. No, I, I'm teasing it. I, do you do you tell them? Yeah, of course I tell them. Yeah, I would have. I would have. Oh. Okay, so that is actually going to require a stealth roll to try and stealthily get everybody, because like you can't just pull everybody aside and be like, "Kalen, stay over there. I have something to talk about with everybody. It's not about you." I like to keep these guys updated as to my bowel movements, but I don't want you hearing it. Okay, I did a stealth roll. Not a great one. Yeah, no, it wasn't a great one. So let's see what Kalen might hear or see. Kalen is so completely distracted that he uh, he, he uh, doesn't even notice as you basically all huddle up and he, and he tells you what's going on. <laughs> That's funny. So we have people following us and a damn T-Rex out there. Was it from out there or was it from in the cave? You guys can drag the map forward and see the cave, right? Uh, that's a good question. Do we, can I, did I notice uh, the direction of the sound? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know. It, it came from somewhere in the swamp ahead of you. Maybe towards the cave? Like if, towards the direction of the cave? Yeah, towards the direction of the cave. And each of those squares is 10 feet? Each of those squares is 2.5 feet. That's normally a step. Two and a half feet a step. It's five feet a step, but I have it broken down into smaller squares to make it easier for, like, halflings and stuff like that. Okay, okay. Okay, cool. All right, so... Oh, you moved away from me. <laughs> so, guys, shall we, do, shall we go talk to our, our young lad and ask him if he knows who is behind us? I say so, and I'd I'd like to deal with the people behind us before we move forward, but that's just my vote. No, I, I'm with you on that. I don't want to be caught between a rock and a potential hard place. I mean, we're just talking out loud in here, so it's safe. Oop, oop. Ah. Uh, the ready. Hey, all right. Pull out my... Turned my, by the frogs, my you? war hammer. You pull out your war hammer. Right. Here comes the frogs. Do we see these? Are they something we're concerned with? Yeah, once you started hearing the frogs, you, you saw them. I mean, they're big. These, these are big frogs. How many feet away are they from us right now? Uh, like 20, 30 feet. Should we just go ahead? We can. Sacred <laughs> flame. Uh, yeah. So, like, you know, usually aren't uh, aren't exactly um, coming forward. Uh, they're they're not charging you. So, as you uh, cast your sacred flame, and a a burst of your uh, uh, let's say that it lightning till the radiance damage, but it looks like uh, a thundercloud descending on the frog and striking it with lightning, and Ooh. and uh, the frog tries to roll a reflex save. Attack first, ask questions later, right? Questions for the frogs? <laughs> no. No. Giant frog. Do we really want to? We do want to shoot our wad on spells on these frogs when we hear. I'm not shooting it. That was a can. Yeah, that was a can trip. He can just fire that as many times as I want. Okay. I'm just trying to scare him away. We don't need a distraction. 
And it works. The lightning zaps the frog and they both quickly dive under the water only to suddenly resurface again, trying desperately to get up on the land. Is that where we are? No, that it's up over here. Yeah, they're they're going away. Oops, this one has to take five damage. Yeah, so they dive land like they're running. There you go. Harassing us. I guess we can turn to... Kalen says, there's men trailing us? <laughs> That's not good. Don't act cool. Is it... They were wearing black, and uh, there's three of them. They set up camp about a mile back following our tracks. I mean, great scout work. I, I guess it's... Uh... You know, any three people in the world. Well, we know they're not following us. That means they're following you. Who else have you told about this? How do you know they're not following you? I mean, except for uh, old Jake back at, at the farm when, when I first you know brought it up. But he said he was too old to be helping me with this. Hmm for you to to try to jump us after the adventure which we still maybe could understand or they're just trying from us after we do whatever is going on Kaylin. so we don't trust each other fully yet you guys don't trust each other we don't know how old word and I my map with you I'm going to give you 50% of the treasure can someone do an intimidation oh. let's go smash those fuckers uh, want to go back and find the camp of those guys? Where should we get out of Kalen? I'm not much of a fighter. But certainly, come with you. Well, there's any. We, go ahead. You know, if if we if we smash those guys, then if we had to, we could take a rest, heal a little bit, and then go back into the cave and fight, live, and get weakened. Then we can assure that they're going to ambush us. Does anyone want to uh, try and check, like, what was suggested? I don't have that. It was horrible at it. I got a minus one. Same. I'd say we proceed with caution and just be aware of that. And um, if we kill whatever in the cave, we can always heal up in there, put the skack. This is a thought. Go confront those three guys. Just... It's not like it'd be not good if we could actually just. Yeah, reluctantly, uh, uh, I'd say. Are good group anyway from uh, alignment status? Yeah, but do they have good in, in the distance? Yeah, that's going to uh, circle around back there. And if they try anything funny, we can. Uh... And then approach them while the other five have a reaction to him. Not. 